Welcome to the Investor News. In this video, we're checking out the most discussed topics, the current economic situation, and how they are affecting or will affect the economy. The Federal Reserve believes it hangs from the hooks of a horrendous dilemma. To cage the inflationary tiger presently amok, it would likely plunge the economy into severe recession. Yet if it navigates a wallowing economy away from recession, inflation will run and run and run. But is it a false choice? Must the Federal Reserve bludgeon the economy to cripple inflation? Consider, it believes it must strangle off excess demand in the economy. It is this excess demand that keeps inflation a going concern. The Keynesian prayer book from which most economists read says it. High priest Paul Krugman, drawing on the book of demand. The problem may be that the Biden economy boomed too much, feeding inflation, and that it now needs to cool off, which may involve a recession, but hasn't yet. Archbishop Larry Summers intones. The right thing to do is to raise taxes right now to take some of the demand out of the economy. A lesser clergyman, Harvard professor Jason Furman, affirms that the economic logic for demand reduction to curb inflation is clear. Just so. But it is this ceaseless obsession with demand that afflicts and haggardies the economics profession as we see it. What about its twin, supply? The economics profession has forgotten its says law, that supply creates its own demand. Products are paid for with products, argued Jean-Baptiste Say over two centuries ago. Consider this one example. One man produces bread. Another produces shoes. The cobbler who requires bread for his dinner appears before the baker. And the baker who must clad his feet appears before the cobbler. They may transact in money, it is true. Yet money merely throws an illusory veil across their transactions. Ultimately the baker purchases his shoes with the bread he has baked. And the cobbler purchases his bread with the shoes he has cobbled. Multiply this example by millions, extend it to the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans, from the border with Mexico to the border with Canada, the calculus remains identical. Enlightenment-era thinker James Mill, father of the more famous John Stuart Mill. The demand of a nation is exactly its power of purchasing. Before we continue, help us clicking that YouTube like button and subscribe now to our channel. This shows the algorithm that you valued this information. And it helps us spread that message. Sharing is caring. And now, let's continue. But what is its power of purchasing? The extent undoubtedly of its annual produce. The extent of its demand therefore and the extent of its supply are always exactly commensurate. Again, supply creates its own demand. To increase supply is to increase demand. When the government attempts to increase demand with no production to match it, it attempts to outlaw says law. What happens when the happy marriage of supply and demand is driven to divorce, to artificial rupture? During the Great Depression the wiseacres of the economics profession consecrated themselves to raising demand. The farmers were in a bad way, they argued. These sad sacks could not fetch enough money for their produce or their livestock. They were wanting in the way of demand and so they needed a hand up. A program was therefore required to raise prices, to increase their demand. The brain trust then in operation hatched a beautiful scheme. What was it? To set fire to the crops and murder the livestock. That is correct, to set fire to the crops and murder the livestock. The business would increase farmer demand, while decreasing consumer supply. For emphasis, they did not butcher animals to bring them to market, but precisely the opposite, to keep them off the market. Ponder for one moment the reality of it. Millions and millions starved. Yet the food to feed them was destroyed on hellish and industrial scales, to increase demand for one group. It is very nearly inconceivable. But there you are. Today's monetary authority wishes to collar inflation by throttling demand. Yet the result is also a throttling of supply. What is the answer to today's galloping inflation? Not reduced supply. But a stable dollar. John Tamney of Real clear. Markets. The rising consensus on the left and right is that demand is the source of our alleged inflation troubles today. Reduced economic growth via higher taxes, lower government spending or a combination of the two will tamp down rising price pressures. Except that these won't. Measures taken to reduce demand will by definition reduce supply. Actually, the inflation answer is a stable dollar. Nothing else. The dominant ideologies of today, and yesterday, are still captivated by a cart before the horse, demand side view of the world. Conservatives also think shrinking demand is the answer. 
In their case, their critique of government spending is that it fosters excess demand on the way to higher prices. Except that it doesn't. While the arguments against government spending are too numerous to list, the latter doesn't cause higher prices born of excess demand. We know this because government can only redistribute wealth and demand insofar as it reaches into the pockets of the productive. All demand is a consequence of supply, period. Will someone please notify the Federal Reserve? I have bad news for you. If you're not rich by now, you're screwed. And if you're in debt, you're even double screwed. How so, you might wonder. Well, the sad truth is that you're working your whole life to make someone else rich. The mega corporations, the banks, the politicians, everyone is getting richer. They get your money. And what is even worse, they get your time. They get your life. You are not even in a rat race. You're in a financial prison. But what could a solution for you look like? Honestly, I don't know, but I know what a solution for me would look like. It's very simple. I use whatever money I have and I multiply it with 1000. This could make my life much easier and probably yours as well. If you have $1,000 available and multiply this with 1000, I believe that this could solve some financial issue for the one or the other. Of course, if you're ugly, you would have to multiply it with much more than 1000. My name is Marco Stan and this is what I decided to do. I decided to 1000x my money. This is not a joke. I know what you may be thinking. You know, what, what, what is this guy talking about? You know, how should this work? This is not possible. Well, I made a detailed video where I laid out my plan. And some clever folks might even want to look at this plan and copy it and do exactly what I do. This is just a little hint on the side. You have two options. You leave, you forget what you have seen. You do whatever you're doing and you hope that somehow you get some other results. Good luck with that. Or you click the link below the video. You enter your email address because I'm not showing this to everybody. You at least watch my video on how I plan to 1000x my money. The choice is yours. Make the right choice. Join me. See what a different future you could have. See at least how I intend, how I plan to do the 1000x. So click on the link below, enter your email address and I see you on the other side. Your Marco Stan.